Welcome, welcome my boxing fans, my first fans ever on YouTube. You guys were the first ones, the boxing heads. You guys kept it moving. Shouts out to everybody. Sean Craddock, Fight Hype, Fight News, Max Boxing back in the day. Strike Hards, Blood Boxing, 78. Man, all my guys, D-Style. D-Source. We had boxing scene back in the day. You know, we had, uh, what's that, East Side Boxing. You know, we had them back in the day. We had a lot of people back in the day who was caught up into the boxing world and the boxing scene at the time. And Rope Dope Radio with Chris Carlson, uh, Dave on Leave It in the Ring. Not that Gabe Montoya guy, but <laughs> but as you can see, things often went and was driven off of the sport of boxing. A lot of people know, like, oh yeah, well you guys are familiar. We know Floyd and. You know, our page was not driven off of Floyd Mayweather, and that was something we didn't want to do. You know, the sport of boxing, as much as we cool with Floyd, you know, the, floor, the sport of boxing will have to continue long after he stops fighting. And now he's not fighting anymore. You know, the sport of boxing has to continue because you can't fight forever. You know, you have your time, then it's someone else's time. So, it's just someone else's time right now. And that some person is Terrence Bud Crawford. And he's fighting Kell Brook Special K. From the UK. And this is my prediction video as the weigh-ins took place. I kind of wanted to wait before we went down this avenue. Um... Kell Brook weighed in at 147 on the head. I wanted to see that he look weight drained. I mean, he, he's older now, making the weight. He didn't have a fight in between in which he was up, so he was basically knowing this fight was coming around and was keeping his weight pretty low and staying laser focused. And it seemed like he did the right things to keep himself in fight shape without draining his body completely. But we won't know until the fight actually happens. Terrence was at 146, you know, a guy who's a lightweight and now is filled in at welterweight. Um, this is an interesting fight. They both like 5'9. Um, Terrence has the longer reach. They both got 27 knockouts. You know, um, Terrence Crawford is what, like 36 and 0? And Kelbrook is 39 and 2. With one of the losses coming to Triple G outside his weight class, and the other one was the arrow. Basically, the fallout from what had happened from his last previous fight. So, we're going to see which Kelbrook we're going we're gonna to get, as this will be probably one of the hardest fights in his career. Now, a lot of you did not know we interviewed Bob Arum because it came so late in the live stream. We did it live. So now you get to hear Bob's take on this fight. Let's hit it. Oh, we're doing great. We're getting ready for this fight. And I said, who best than the call is than the man who set it all up? Because we've been trying to get this fight done for a while. And true to it, it's finally here. Yeah. Crawford versus Brooke. Now, have they? Are you guys still finalizing the card? Because I, I know Joshua Franco is supposed to be fighting. Uh, uh Joshua Franco, I think, is fighting on this undercard, and Joshua Greer Juniors with Edwin. Uh, oh, Joshua Greer. You call him Joshua Franco? Uh, no, Franco. Joshua Franco. Oh, yeah, Franco is fighting uh, the rematch. Yeah, with, uh, Maloney with the. Uh, with uh, Maloney, yeah. Yeah, so on that undercard, so 
they I think they were still finalizing some of the fights on there. So they had an update. Well, they're all done now, but uh, again, that's the way I know Greer, Josh Greer is on the card. Oh yeah, Josh Grizz Jr. Yeah, versus Edwin Rodriguez in that eight round of in the battle weights. That's gonna be a lot of leather flying in that one. Yeah, it sure will be. Yep. So and then we get to watch it on ESPN and ESPN Plus. So we get to see both of them. So if you got both, you can just switch back and forth. Yeah, ESPN uh, Plus will do the uh, preliminary fight, and then the main fights will be on. Uh, Regular ESPN, the uh, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The uh, uh, Lydia Brooke platform. Okay. Now this fight here, a lot of people don't understand because they they don't remember how Kell Brook, because he's kind of been away for a little bit. But Kell Brook is probably that this is probably one of the most challenging fights in Terrence Crawford's career because I I I see, I agree. I I agree. I I think uh, you know he always was a good fighter, and he had uh, and he persisted. You know when uh, uh, he had uh, that eye injury, uh, and uh, but he never gave up, and he's in unbelievable shape. He's going to be a, a really ferocious fight. Yeah, I think the toughest fight. Of uh, of uh, Crawford's career, definitely. Uh, Brooke, Brooke is naturally the bigger guy. Yep, true. And uh, not only that, he comes from the Ingle Gym, you know, in Sheffield, and those guys are very known to be crafty. He's uh, now he's also a skilled boxer. He's also kind of slick too. He has a lot of movement, yeah. uh, upper body movement. That's right. So this what makes a very interesting fight. And he gave Errol Spence problems when they fought before, right. but he had to come down and from weight because he had just fought Triple G, moved all the way up to middleweight, and then had to cut all the weight down and show the true heart of a champion. He could have just vacated the title and went to 54. He chose to stay in his hometown, do a fight, and defend yeah. that fight anyway. And uh, you know, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Anyway, it's going to be a good fight, and the thing I don't think about it, keep saying it, it's free. <laughs> right, and that's the thing, you know. Uh, some some companies that you know they decided that they're gonna just throw these fights on pay per views and charge an astronomical amount of money for mediocre fights. And I'm like, I, I don't understand that process at all. But that was not what what was the, their model. That kills the sport when you do that. Exactly. There's yeah. a limit to what people can spend. Yep. And, you know, they'll spend for premium content, but they're not going to spend in big numbers for ordinary stuff that should be free. Exactly. And when people keep throwing stuff on, it, it ends up hurting and going over into everybody else's business. So, well, everybody knows what they want to do. That's part of the free country. So I don't fault anybody, but I like to do it because I just think it's, it's just wrong to do it. Exactly. And that's that's the difference between people who know what they're doing and people who just doing what they think is going to work or, you know, because they have a platform to do it. But going into this fight, looking into the future, um, I know Lomo's recovering. What is what is the future looking like for him right now? Oh, for uh, for Lomachenko, yes. Yeah. Oh, for Lomachenko. Yes, for Lomachenko. He's recovering, and I told him forget about fighting right now. We'll talk when you're uh, ready to come back. So you know he may go down to what thirty. Maybe I match him with. Uh, Talk to Floyd, put him with uh, Bank Davis, or a fight like that. I think he's going to go down to 130 where he's got his suit. Okay, now, how is the relationship with working with them? Because the other side seems to be predicated on only fighting in-house talent instead of going out and fighting the best for the fighter. 
in the fight that the people want to see. You know, we would love to see. We love you, man. I know you don't. For example, the semifinal, Franco is a uh, golden boy fighter. or Lomachenko versus Tank Davis and things like that. And but it seems like the other side seem to don't really want to make those fights. They keep they seem to want to keep their thing in the house. And I think that's well, unfair to the sport. Who the other side is. I think you know Floyd. Uh, he he kind of he's the promoter for uh, Davis and. Uh, we've talked to Floyd, and uh, Floyd just wants to make fight, you know. Okay. So we don't have a problem with making that fight. All right. I, I think then, then that's a great fight I'll pay money to see. Now, that's a fight you can put on pay per view. I agree with you. I agree. So, I agree. Yeah, all right. See, we always in agreement because we, uh, we're always what's best for the fight. For the fight fans, and what's best for the fights? And when you see this fight, we keep telling them Terrence Crawford versus Kell Brook is going to be fireworks, and nobody's going to want to miss it. It's going to be just out this world. Another performance that's going to be top stellar. It's going to be another uh, another welterweight performance, either by Tell Terrence Crawford or Kell Brook. So I agree. With, I agree with you. And besides. We're not asking anybody to go into their pocket to see if we're right. Yep, it's free. So, it's free. there you go. You do better than that. Got to. So, there you go. That was Bob Aram and myself having a conversation on live stream. Uh, you can go find that live stream to hear the whole thing in its entirety. But I wanted to keep this on Kell Brook and Terrence Crawford. Now, we did go into the Wilder situation too, but that's all. We'll just leave that on the, what we did on the live stream. Now, my prediction in, as far as styles go, uh, Kell Brook is very, what I would say, reactionary. You know, he mostly uses his reflexes. He kind of uses what you bring towards him and tries to counter and starts his offense. He kind of baits you to come in. Kind of what Terrence does, but Terrence has much more ring control. Where Kale kind of waits for his moments and spots before he attacks, I think Terrence is more comfortable controlling a ring even when there's not a lot of action going on. He always seems like the ring general. Even that's something Floyd Mayweather was very good at. That even without a punch being thrown, you can tell he was in control of the fight. The fight was going in his favor. He was controlling the action. He was controlling how the fight was going to be fought. And sometimes Kell has a has a difficulty establishing that in the ring and getting comfortable. But then he gets into a groove and he starts to take over. What Kel does is he's very good fighting with pull counters. You can't go to sleep and think he's just a stationary target. You have to get Kel Brook on his back foot and make him move his legs around. Kel is very good, but he fights uh, flat-footed like Errol, so which made the fight very, you know, even uh, at some point. Um, he's very good with his uh, hooks as well. So you got to, you know, kind of watch out for his hooks. His, uh, like, he has a right hook uppercut. He kind of lunges a little bit when he's off balance and will lunge to try to get a punch across with his uh, left jab. And his power surprises people because he's very strong. Now, Terrence is probably used to fighting bigger, stronger people. So for him, he's adapted to it. People think because he came from lightweight that he can't deal with bigger guys. 
Floyd came from lightweight. And he came into welterweight and fought guys that was 20 pounds bigger than him all the time. But Floyd was used to doing that his entire career. He sparred with bigger guys. So that when he got hit by a bigger guy, it was nothing shocking to him. It was nothing that he couldn't overcome. He could still still take care of business and do what he has to do. For this fight, coming from the southpaw position, Terrence will have a lot of opportunities to land uh, to land a sweeping uh, right hook on Kell Brook. And we, we have to see how Kell's going to react because he had a large inactivity period. And we could see early rounds some rust might be there. And how well is he taking the weight loss? You know, as far as making 147, because he's a big 147. And he was at 54 fighting, and now he's at welterweight. And this is the mirror image, because Kel Brook looks at Terrence Crawford as, I'm supposed to be right there. <laughs> that's my spot. That's my position. That's, that's supposed to be me. Right there. And you're there. That's gotta sit that's gotta stay on your psyche because you know you can get all of it back, all the mistakes that was made from taking the arrow spence fight the way you did after fighting Triple G and you know, it, all of those bad decisions that were made there, they can all be righted. You could write everything with one fight on Saturday night. That's all it takes. One fight, one punch. And your whole life is back on course. That's all it takes. So when you look at the, the bigger picture and you look at, wow, this here is the reason why we came to love boxing. You know, the what if moment. When people say, oh, he's washed up, he, he's written off. How many of those times we've seen those guys put up some of the best fights of their careers because you never know what's in the mind of a champion he's a champion okay the same people that didn't give him a chance against Sean Porter are the same people who are writing him off today now Terrence his attitude his demeanor how he, his approach is, he doesn't want to lose. He doesn't believe he can lose. If he do A, B, C, and D, he's going to win. Now, what Terrence does is try to figure out what the other person is doing and try to implement his style or how he's going to fight this fight and bring it to him. Now, what Terrence does better than Kel is body attack. Kel goes to the body, but not as frequently as he needs to. And in this fight, he's going to need to get to Terrence Crawford's body before he goes up top. He's going to try to counter up top with some shots, but Bud's going to try to break his body down. And Bud's got to try to back him up and get him on his back foot and have Kel trying to be more defensive and using his legs and exerting energy. Because if Kel is, is able to stand flat-footed and just stand in front of him for a while, then, you know, he's, he's still in seconds to stay active. So if you're Terrence, what you want to do is use your angles. Don't switch from conventional to softball and get caught in the middle of a switch. Terrence is real good at throwing a feint before he switch or get too close to where, you know, it's a tie-up. But it won't distract Kel. Going from softball to conventional, that won't, it won't throw his game plan off. Because they basically trained for a left-handed softball Terrence Crawford. They believe he fights in the softball position, and he only switches in conventional. <sighs> he switches to the conventional convention um, just for a break or change up to see if he gets a reaction. So he normally starts off as a conventional stance just to see how you responding to it. Then he'll switch up and go back to 
boxing what he's more comfortable with, and that's fighting out of the softball position. Now, what Terrence can't do is take big right hands from Kell Brook. Kell Brook has a, a, a jab, right hook combination, and a jab, right uppercut combination that starts things off. He'll hit an angle, come with a left hook, jab, uppercut. Kel can throw these hooks and uppercuts with blazing speed, and he throws them off speed. So you can maybe see them coming sometimes, and sometimes you're going to get clipped. So how well Terrence can take those punches and keep coming will show the grit. And Terrence, is, he's got that it factor. Like, this is not going to derail him. He's not going to let himself be stopped by this momentum. Like, this is, he was made for these moments. So, I think, overall, I think he, he'll get a, a knockdown in probably round nine. I'll say from a body shot. And then he'll start applying the pressure on Kell Brook. And I think the corner is going to stop it in between the rounds. His corner just called it. So I think he gets a TKO victory in like round 9 or 10 for Terrence Crawford. Uh, but I think it'll be a competitive fight early on. And then I think as the fight goes past round five and six. Terrence has started to assert himself a lot more and the speed of the fight will turn up and I don't know if Brooke will be able to match it. So love both fighters man. That's my prediction for the fight. Thank you guys. I hope you uh, subscribe to the page. Hit that notification bell. Definitely hit the like button. And if you want to donate to the page, our cash app is Carcino. Thank you guys to everybody who's done so already in the past. And now, I appreciate it, all the love and support. We're out.